here today with Hugh Chester Jones, and we're talking about uh, the Dairy Calf and Heifer Association gold standards, specifically this time about growth standards and importance of meeting those growth standards through some feeding recommendations. So, Hugh, welcome you today. Thank you, Walt. Tell us a little bit about your facility first, Hugh, and where you're located and the type of uh, work you're doing with calves. Well, we're located in in southern Minnesota. The Southern Research and Outreach Center is part of the University of Minnesota. And for the last eight years, we've been contract raising baby calves from two to four days old to six months, um, working with three commercial dairies in partnership with Allied Industry. And um, we're focusing on basically nutrition and management research of these calves from from when we get them to when they move on to the next day's grower. So we collect information on growth, uh, serum proteins, health, and provide that not only to the dairies but also to the industry. So let's first talk a little bit about the uh, DCHA gold standards for growth and what are they, and then we can get into how to actually meet those growth standards. Well, today, what we're focusing on the first 60 days, and one of our DCHA goals is to by 60 days to double those calves' birth weight. And that's the one of the things that we've been focusing on through our programs here in Waseca, Minnesota. In addition to doubling birth weight, we also like to see good frame growth on these calves and trying to make sure we attain four inches of frame growth uh, by the end of 60 days. In addition, we also like to track periodic growth throughout that nursery period and we recommend using scales, tape, or a measuring stick so farmers have a good idea on if they're reaching the gold standards or not. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the actual feeding process. Tell me a little bit about liquid feed sources and some of the feeding recommendations that are out there. There are, there are a number of ways that we can make sure that those calves are getting enough energy and protein during the, the uh, pre-weaning phase. The options open to producers include whole or waste milk, pasteurized milk, and a number of options for milk replacers. And it is milk replacers are still the dominant type of liquid feeding program throughout the country. And a lot of changes recently have focused on more, not just the conventional type program, but the intensive or a modified intensive program. And so milk replacers we've been using here in Waseca have ranged in protein from 20 to 28% and 15 to 22% fat. One of the things this last year that has changed the way that we're feeding calves is the limitation of medicated milk replacers. And we used to be able to continuously feed a medicated milk replacer throughout the pre-weaning period with a neoteromycin oxytetracycline, a two-to-one ratio. But now we can feed a high concentrate limit feeding up to only 14 days, and that is as a preventative rather than, than a, a routine measure. So are some changes now in the industry in terms of milk replacer uh, formulations. There are also some alternative nutrients and additives available for milk replacers to replace milk proteins, and we've done a lot of work in that regard. So in terms of feeding recommendations, volume of feed can range from 8 to 14% of birth weight and the solids in the milk replace would be 125 to 70% solids, depending on the type of program. Traditionally, feeding twice a day, but we've looked at once a day feeding, and also more recently, there's a lot of interest in multiple feedings through groups, whether it be an automatic group feeder or a NERSET type program. In addition, we make sure we maintain that intake of energy, especially in the winter months here in, in Minnesota, by increasing the milk solids and volume in the cold weather. In the hot weather, we make sure that those calves have access to uh, fresh water daily, as well as joined throughout the year. We've talked a little bit about the importance of getting through that first feeding period of life, and, and now we're going to talk about the starter feed. Tell me a little bit about the importance of starter feed and what to watch for. Well, starter feed, the critical part of having a good palatable starter feed is to uh, encourage the calf to consume that starter and also it's very important for rumen development and we're trying to make sure that we raise our baby calf with a optimized rumen and stomach development so they'll maintain that intake after weaning. So there are some options in our starter feed program. We can have a complete test drive starter 
or a pelleted starter, we've done quite a bit of work looking at our options for starters. The starters in the market we see is range from 18 to 22% crude protein with a minimum amount of fiber, fat, and vitamins and minerals. The importance is to make sure that that starter is offered to the calf straight away. And usually we offer between a quarter and half a pound of starter in a bucket and make sure we increase that as necessary. One of the important things is to have fresh feed in front of that calf every day. We do not see much intake for the first two weeks, and uh, but after that, once the rumen starts developing and we've encouraged feed intake, then those calves from two to three weeks will start increasing their intake of their consumption. Facility, you've been doing many of these things and uh, have some pretty good data to support the things we've talked about today. We found that typically in our situation, the, the complete texturized feed with some uh, liquid molasses seems to stimulate our intake quite well. And within that texturized feed, we've looked at different options in terms of the types of corn, the roasted corn, steam flake corn, or whole corn, and a combination of fiber sources. As long as it's fresh and palatable, the texturized feed seems to do well. The disadvantage of texturized feed in, in Minnesota in the cold weather tends to get a little bit hard, and so having a good palatable pellet feed may be another option. To date, we really haven't found a good pellet feed that's equal to the texturized feed, but um, we're working on that aspect of it. In our particular program here in Waseca, we wean calves at 42 days. We go from twice a day feeding to once a day feeding at 36 days and wean at 42. Because of the type of uh, system we have, we always wean on calendar months. But if we look at this slide, what I've done here is summarize the intake from day one to day 56 in two-week periods of, of our calf starters. If our standard goal is to wean calves when they're consuming one and a half pounds a day of starter feed for three consecutive days, then we can see, like looking at this chart, that between days 29 and 42, those calves are really consuming quite a bit of, of starter feed, and we could actually have, could have weaned earlier and saved a little bit of money. This particular chart indicates what types of range one would expect during the pre-weaning period and all the nursery period of these calves. And you can see the first 14 days, not very much intake. The second 14 days were close to a pound a day. And then the last two weeks before weaning were well over two pounds a day average. After weaning, most of those calves will be eating four to five pounds of starter feed. So this gives a good cross-section of a benchmark for people to expect um, when they're planning the types of programs at home. Tell us a little bit of your experience shooting for the gold standards and how well you've been able to achieve them. We've been very fortunate as a contract raiser working with commercial dairymen to be able to look at some options that we can see where we can attain those gold standards. And so we have quite a bit of variability in, in the types of programs that met the gold standards. Our base program is a 2020 all milk milk replacer and fed at one and a quarter pounds a day for 35 days and half that amount from 36 to 42 with an 18 percent calf starter not consistently but we have been able to double our initial weight on many occasions just from this base program and a lot of that is due to starter intake by getting good starter intake then those calves will really take off we've also looked at a 24 20 milk replacer fed similarly to the base program and met the gold standards. More intensive type program, the 2816, fed at one and a half pounds a day for 35 days and half of that from 36 to 42 with a slightly higher protein carb starter, 22%, has also met the gold standards. We have done quite a bit of work with the intensive program, a similar 2816, fed for 10 days a uh, pound and a half and then transition to two and a quarter pound a day. This particular program with a 22% calf starter, we, we consistently have shown those calves to meet the gold standards by 60 days old. And because of the increase in cost of the intensive type milk replacer, we thought, well, could we modify a program to see if we could really get those calves to get going on a 28-16 the first 14 days? and save a bit of money by going back to a, a 2020 at a pound per day 
on this particular system, we've been able to attain the gold standards as well. So this gives you a pretty good cross-section of what farmers can do to meet the gold standards. It's not just one program, but really it depends on good management and a healthy calf to start with and make sure that we get pretty good starter intake throughout the nursery period. Thank you, Hugh, for your time today discussing the DCHA gold standards and some feeding uh, protocols to help reach them. Thank you, Walt. It was a pleasure.